Welcome to the Man Child Chronicles podcast, where four friends talk entertainment, fatherhood, and sports, all with sarcasm, comedic timing, and a healthy dose of toxic masculinity. Let's welcome our hosts, Ryan, John, Mike, and Jay. Growing up never took so long. Hey, welcome in, cronies, the Man Child Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, here with my three best friends, Jay, Michael, and John. And tonight, we're going to do a little weird, random facts. Your weird sound like Shaggy there. Like, can you redo that as Shaggy? I can. Like tonight, we're going to do... Weird random facts. What do you think about that, Scoob? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Ryan, do you even need us? Do you need us to go? <laughs> you can just do a whole podcast. It's an hour long <laughs> episode of just him talking Ryan. to himself in different voices. <laughs> I told him he should do a football episode like that once because me and Jay were both hecka sick. And I was like, Ryan should just do the whole football episode of Shaggy and Scooby talking about the games back and forth. And Ryan will be like, it was the best episode I've ever done. I had so much fun. We, uh, I had so much fun. When I went back to South Dakota, we did this golf tournament, and then we got dinner from this, and we were at this place eating dinner, and these people I haven't seen forever sat down, and for some reason, I don't know how it came up, but somebody said, we're talking about Scooby-Doo and Shaggy, so I started talking like Shaggy, and all of a sudden, this guy at another table started talking to me as Scooby-Doo. So we just started going back and forth. It was great. Did we just become best friends? That's what I did right when we were done. I go, did we just become best friends? Do you want to go do karate in the garage? <laughs> so now I talk to this guy once. It turns out he only talks to them, though, every time. He only talks to them as Scooby and yeah. Shaq. So they never have a conversation in their normal voice. In their real like, voices. Yeah, they talk to each other once a week, and they just like yeah. never talk to each other in normal voice. They just go back and forth with Scooby and Shag. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Like, how's the chemo going, man? Real good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 The doctor said I had six months to live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like that's not good. <laughs> oh, zoinks! <laughs> now imagine, now imagine you're a cancer doctor. Doctor, that's how you bring the news to your patients that they're dying. You do it in a scooby and shag voice. <laughs> Row, I got bad news for you. It's so bad. Why? He's trying to be like Patch Adams and be fun and whimsical. Oh no, Scoob! What's the bad news? Oh, he's got cancer. It's all over his body. He's gonna die. Oh can no! Is there better? anything we can do to help? Nope, nothing we can nope. do. Maybe a scoop stack will help you. <laughs> you just throw a little graham crackers. <laughs> What's that going to help? Like two Scooby snacks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Robinson, if, if you're this. listening, <laughs> yeah. Tim Robinson, if you're listening, this would be perfect for your show on Netflix. Oh, Take it. oh you know man, child God. approved. <laughs> All right, here's a weird oh. random fact for you. <laughs> I have tears. Did you know that Google Images was literally created after Jennifer Lopez wore the infamous dress? At the 2000 Grammys, so many people were searching for her outfit, the search engine added an imagine function. Hmm. An, an imagine function? That's what it <laughs> no, said. Yep. That's what the images <laughs> function. I guess it's called an imagine function. I don't know. <laughs> what are they imagining, Brian? <laughs> what are they imagining? <laughs> Oh 
Oh my gosh. Oh. All right, here's the weird random fact for you guys. An oh, art collector you. paid $10,000 for invisible artwork. Actor James Franco created a piece of art called An Endless Tank of Oxygen, which was just a, a glass cylinder closed full of air. And somebody paid $10,000 for it. I'm in the wrong line of business. Well, your name's not James Franco either. <sighs> Old James Franco, not the current James Franco version. <laughs> <laughs> Just one, to uh, be clear. That ain't going for $10,000 anymore. <laughs> Only on the black market. He was like, it's going to increase in value so much. He's in the Oz, the great and the powerful. <laughs> These previous conversations, we're really concerned about who we affiliate yeah. ourselves with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure James Franco's on the I'm writing letters to in pro of Danny Masterson rape trial. So, yeah. Didn't Thanks, Ashton James Kutcher already do that? Oh, yes, he did. Yes, and he, he did. walked it back just as quickly. He's <laughs> like, oh no, guys! <laughs> oh, oh no! <laughs> Guilty. Uh, uh oh. Yes. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think right now is a good time. So the other day, I was listening to uh, Mr. Ballin, and he told this story that completely blew my mind. But it ends with a very weird random fact that I don't know if you guys knew this or not. So if you don't mind to hear my random fact, it's time for story time with Jay. Oh, God. <laughs> so back in March of 1951, this man named Samson, he was drafted into the army. Ryan, how old he were you in 1951? <laughs> my dad was one he was a couple <laughs> my, okay. Mike, Mike was one okay so back in 1951 Samson is drafted into the army he lives in Seattle Washington and he is going to be stationed in Fort Ord which is in Northern California so he travels down to Fort Ord he completes his training it's during the Korean War he, he does not get shipped off to the Korean War in fact, they make him the lifeguard for the pool at Fort Ord. And so Samson's like, okay, I will be the lifeguard. And he does that on the weekends and at nights. He's a bouncer at a club so he can get a little bit of extra cash. Well, in September of 1951, he needs a little R&R &R time. So he's like, hey, I'm going to travel back up to Seattle for the weekend. I want to spend it with my family. I want to see my girlfriend. It gets approved. The cool thing about back in that time is you could travel for free as long as he wore his military uniform and he traveled on a military plane. So he goes back to Seattle, he spends the time with his family, spends the time with his girlfriend. He, well, he has to get back to Fort Ord because he has to report for his job the next day. So he goes to the airport and he, he, he checks in. There's only one military plane there and it's a World War II bomber. It's an old dive bomber plane. And they only have room for one person in the cockpit, and that's the pilot. And he doesn't have enough money to pay for a civilian ticket. So he's like, crap, what am I going to do? I need to get on this plane. I've got to make it back to Fort Ord. So he goes up to the pilot, whose name is uh, Sergeant An or, sorry, Lieutenant Anderson. And he's like, hey, I really need to get on this flight. Could I cram into your compartment? Um on the back on the underneath side of your plane uh so that way i can get back to fort ord and the guy's like absolutely not that's a terrible idea uh it's not made for someone to be down there like it's super tight i'm afraid you're gonna get hurt and he's like man what do you want me to do like if i don't report tomorrow i'm gonna get in really big freaking trouble you're in the army too you know how it is Finally, Anderson relents against his better judgment. He's like, okay, okay, just cram in there and I'll, I'll you know, just be careful. And so Samson makes his way around the plane. He opens the hatch. He crawls in. It's tight, but he can fit in and he waits. Anderson makes his pre-trip pre around. He's a little flustered because of all this, but he does his pre-trip. He gets to the hatch. He shuts and locks it. And then he gets into the cockpit. He spends a few minutes in there getting the plane ready to go. And then he takes off. 
Well, as he's taken off, he's barreling down the pl- uh, down the runway, and as soon as he starts to lift off, the hatch opens. And so Samson's down there, and obviously he's like, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. He's looking out, and the plane is lifting off into the, into the air. And he knows right away, well, this isn't good. Not because I'm going to get sucked out of the plane like the movies kind of like try to make you think everything just gets sucked out. He can hold himself in there. The problem is, is there's no oxygen. The higher you go up in the altitude, there's no oxygen to sur- for a human to survive. And so part of during that time when the pilot gets in the cockpit, he's pumping air into his cockpit. He started pumping air down there into the compartment that Samson's in. Well, all that air is immediately gone. And so Samson's sitting there in this compartment and he's like, I've got to get this hatch closed. So he kind of wedges his feet up against the uh, walls, he reaches out, so he's kind of hanging out of the airplane, and he grabs onto the hatch, and he's pulling it, trying to get the hatch shut, and it won't close. The wind is way too strong, he can't fight against it. And so he lets it go, he crawls back into the compartment, and he kind of tucks himself as far up as he can, and he wraps his arms around the pole that's in that compartment, and he just holds on. Well, let's go back up to Anderson, the pilot who's flying the plane. He knows none of this is going on because this is an old World War II dive bomber plane. There's no alarm saying the hatch opened. He goes up as high as he can. He hits his cruising altitude and he starts checking his gauges and he's looking at everything and he realizes, I made a terrible mistake. I don't have enough fuel to make it to Fort Ord. And so he starts freaking out and he starts calling on the radio trying to get a hold of any of these other airports he's trying to reach someone he can't get a hold of anyone he's looking at the fuel gauge he can't even make it back to seattle and then all of a sudden there's another malfunction again totally unrelated to what's happening with samson down low he starts losing his oxygen and so he realizes I'm going to die. I'm going to pass out up here and we're going to we're going to crash because now my oxygen's getting is lowering too. So he dive bombs down to get the lower altitude. Well, while he does that, Samson starts waking back up. He passed out because he didn't have enough oxygen in that little compartment. So all of a sudden his body starts waking up and he looks and sure enough, he's like, oh my gosh, we're crashing. They're dive bombing down and they're right in the middle of the ocean. Before he can even think about what to do, boom, they are in the water, crash landed in the ocean. Uh, Samson's literally holding on, and at this point, he can't swim out because all the water is rushing into the plane and into his tiny compartment. It's too strong. The current is just holding him in there, so he has to wait for the water level to you know, level out in his compartment. So he finally, it finally does, so then he swims out. He gets to the top, and he, they're just in the middle of the sea, and he can't see anything. He sees the plane. He's trying to find Anderson. Finally, he sees the cockpit lift up, and Anderson climbs out. He's a little bruised. He's a little shaken up, but he climbs out, and Samson starts screaming for him. They link up together, and Anderson's like, there are life rafts in the plane. So they swim down. They pull out two life rafts. They get them out. They it, they do the emergency thing. They blow up. They climb into the life rafts, and at that time, the plane sinks. It's gone. And so they're in these life rafts, and he's like, Anderson, where are we? And he's like, well, we were two or three miles off the coast of California. We just have to head east. At this point, it's so foggy. The sun's going down. Uh, They can't see. They have no idea where they're at. They just know we just should head east. East is towards the coast of California. Well, it turns out where they had crashed was two miles off of Point Reyes, California, which is a known great white shark breeding ground. And they had no idea that that's where they were. They just know they have to get east. And so here they go. Uh, They start paddling along. They're trying to swim with their life raft to get moving. And 
when the when the sun goes down, it's nighttime now. They they go maybe about an hour. At this point, the water gets so choppy it launches Samson out of his boat into the water, and his raft is going away. At this point, he's screaming for Anderson. Anderson turns around and sees him. There's nothing he can do. He tries going back, fighting against the current to go save Samson. He can't, and slowly and surely he drifts away. And so Samson's left in the middle of the water, and he has no idea which way he's supposed to go but he points one way and says i guess i'm gonna start swimming and so this guy just starts swimming and he swims for maybe an hour remember it's nighttime it's cold he's in shark infested waters doesn't even realize it it's cold uh, but he's swimming just one direction he pointed away and he's going he finally breaks out of the fog and he can see a light and it kind of gave him hope it rejuvenated him it gave him the strength of i've got to survive and so he just he just gives it everything he has he makes it to the beach he makes it to dry land and at this point he is just coughing puking up all the seawater he is so cold his body is going into hypothermia he's in shock he can barely crawl it takes him 45 minutes just to crawl up to where that light was at and it was it turns out that was a radio station and it was ran by one dude who happened to be there at the time and so samson gets to the door and he's hitting on it and so the guy comes and opens the door and he's like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? He brings Samson in, wraps him in a blanket, tries to ask him what's going on, where he's from, but Samson can't even talk. Like he, he, he's so cold, he's just shivering, he's just trying to survive. So the guy calls the Coast Guard, they end up taking him down to um, this like a uh, station that the Coast Guard has there in Point Reyes. And that's where he reunites with Anderson again. And it turns out Anderson would have made it to the beach as well, and he got help. And so both guys survive. They get help. And after that crazy ordeal, um, Ord finally made, or um, Samson finally makes it to Fort Ord, and he gets to make it to his shift to be the lifeguard. And after his ordeal, they never put him in active. Like they never sent him to war. He spent the next two years as a lifeguard at Fort Ord. And then when the Korean War ended, so was his service. So he's honorably discharged. He's free to go. But that crazy life that Samson had, it turns out he would go on to become one of the most famous actors, directors, and producers we've ever seen. He started hundreds of movies and TV shows. He won four uh, Academy Awards, four Golden golden globes do you guys know who samson was that's none other than mr clint eastwood himself that is his time in the military clint eastwood there you go fun fact for you hmm. i was waiting for based on your other stories i was waiting for like a bunch of people to die or be dismembered yeah. or <laughs> something like that so i was like oh this is the oh, okay that's a cool story okay great 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 <laughs> A happy ending for one. <laughs> wow. Clint Eastwood. Weird, weird random fact for you. I have You're no idea. You're telling me Clint Eastwood was a lifeguard? Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how, crazy, how crazy is that? That's pretty crazy. That okay. is pretty crazy. A story to keep that you can share at the dinner table or when you're are, with a party. Are Come all on. of your turns in this game going to be that long? Absolutely not. I just, I heard that story the other day and it blew my mind. And so when you guys said do weird random facts, I, I got one for you. Okay. Let me tell you it's another fact that might blow your mind, Jay. Thank if you. If you have three quarters, four dimes, and four pennies, you have a dollar and 19 cents. You also okay. have the largest amount of coins <laughs> without being able to make change for a dollar. Very interesting. I don't know. Jay's Clint Eastwood I feel like story. I got all the math calculations going around my head right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys are bringing the most high level weird random facts here, so I'm going to match one here with another high level one. Did you guys know lobsters communicate with their bladders? They have bladders on either side of their head, so they communicate by urinating at other <laughs> other lobsters and forming them if they are sad or happy. How do they Take urinate notes. if the bladder's in their head? Take notes, it's on Mark the side Kelly's of their defense head. team. Take notes. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Kelly's defense team. <laughs> 
He's just, just communicating. I'm just communicating with them. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> Let me tell you how I'm doing, ladies. Okay. Um, gonna bring you guys computer facts. Oh, I'm so excited. So here's here's another one that's that's uh here's one that's a little more relatable. The first one gigabyte hard drive weighed as much as a refrigerator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In 1980, IBM released the first hard disk drive to breach the one gigabyte barrier. The IBM 3380 had a storage capacity of 2.52 gigs, which explains its enormous cabinet that was roughly the size of a refrigerator. And it weighed 550 pounds. For context, the new iPhone 15 Pro Max that debuted just mere weeks ago comes in a one terabyte option model. One terabyte equals 1,000 gigs in the palm of your hand. Wow. 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 Did you say it weighed 550 pounds? Yes. Was that correct? Did Brendan Fraser weigh more than that in the whale? Or did he weigh less than that? (laughs) Somewhere in the same ballpark. I think he weighed more than that, John. I'm going to go over the one gigabyte. I'm going over. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, I do have another one. Um, Did you guys know that in the movie Mean Girls, Rachel McAdams was 25 years old? Playing the part of Regina George. That makes her cool mom. Uh, Amy Poehler played her cool mom in that movie. Amy was 32 at the time. So she was playing uh, Rachel McAdams' mom, and she was only seven years older than her. Hmm. You mean they weren't all underage girls in that movie? That is correct. Disappointing. (laughs) Did you know? The blob of toothpaste on a toothbrush actually has a name. It's called a nurdle. And there was a gigantic lawsuit for all the toothpaste companies that wanted to own the rights to that name. To nurdle? Nurdle. Nurdle. They wanted to own the rights to nurdle. So when you get your kid's teeth brushed tonight, say, let me get that nurdle on your toothbrush. I feel R. like Kelly's a team l- take note. Yeah. <laughs> take note. R. Kelly's defense team. I got a little for on Olivia your Benson to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> did you <I'm-> know? <laughs> did you know that you are twice you are more you are twice more likely to die from a vending machine falling on you than from an actual shark attack? Said the armless surfer. <laughs> <laughs> Confucius say. <laughs> Confucius say. <laughs> uh, very good. Did you know? Here's a weird random fact for you. That man who stand on toilet high on pot. High on pot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Confucius, Confucius say. Ah, Confucius say. Ah, Confucius. No, here's here's my last and final fact about computers and it's only one sentence 90% of the world's currency the world's currency exists only on computers this means that about 10% of all the global currency is actual physical tender yeah I believe that I'm telling when the when we get reset back to the stone ages, we're in for a world of hurt, my friend. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Did you know... But what's going to be the next major currency? What's going to... Like, if the world economy falls... Gold. Is it gold? Is it gold? Seashells. Is it seashells? That's what I'm wondering. Like, what's it going to be? Like, who has the most guns and ammo? Mike wins. Who has the none. most? I have none of those things. Who has the most um, 
I don't know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, John wins? Like, I just, what's going to be... What if it's crunchy peanut butter, the then John doesn't win? <laughs> I do not want to live in this world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you got to predict what's what's going to be the next currency. But could you predict that stress is desserts spelled backwards? Once again, high level. All these high level. <laughs> that is why desserts relieve stress. Did I you like know it. the first product with a UPC code on it was Wrigley gum? Thanks, Wrigley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ryan, did you know that the Japanese word kachizamishi is the act of eating when not when you're hungry, but because your mouth is lonely? Why did you specifically let's just point say, me out? Let's just say, point. let's just say, I practice the word kachizamishi all the time. That's my just mouth. way of calling you a fat F over in Japan. <laughs> my mouth is lonely. <laughs> that man well, has a lonely mouth. Well, according to suicide statistics... <laughs> that means something different in prison. <laughs> <laughs> according to suicide statistics... S -s 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 not whatever that word is. I feel like Joe Biden here. This is a thing over there. It's the statistics. Uh, and the guy in the pool... Come on, man. Monday is the day that most people uh, self-destruct. So, yeah. Monday's uh, Garfield. <laughs> Monday. <laughs> what are you going to do? I, I understand that. If I'm going to unalive myself, why would I do it on a Friday? It's kind of like in the in the line of work we all used to be in. You don't you don't fire somebody on Friday. You fire them on Monday. <laughs> That's right. That's and, right. And now that After I think about it, weekend. that might contribute to that. <laughs> <laughs> you do that because in our line of work we work weekends. So <laughs> That's right. Nobody wants to cover that shift. I'll we'll just let them work a few more days. All right? Anybody got any more weird random Weird random. I can fetch. rapid fire some for you here. Go ahead. Go for it. President, did you know that President Calvin Coolidge would press the emergency button on his desk, then hide from the Secret Service, making them run around <laughs> frantic searching oh, for him? That's epic. <laughs> and it's your favorite president now, isn't it, John? <laughs> Good one, said Abe Lincoln in heaven. <laughs> Did you know there's a flower in the rainforest of Central and South America that resembles a puckering mouth covered in lipstick? It's called a Cyquarteria alata. After his recent vacation to South America rainforest, former President Bill Clinton was adamant he did not have sexual relations with that flower. <laughs> Last one for you here. A scientist was performing an experiment involving music and milk production in regards with cows. He discovered cows produce 3% more milk when listening to music. After his recent vacation to a farm, former President Bill Clinton was adamant that he did not have real sexual relations with that cow while pointing at his wife, Hillary. <laughs> Oh. Oh. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> oh, John, you killed it. Good. Very good. All right, cronies. Until next time. Peace. We out of here. Thanks for joining us today on The Man Child Chronicles. You can find us on your favorite social media platforms at The Man Child Chronicles. Don't forget to join us every Friday for a new episode. That's all for now. See you next time.